so many great songs, so many hit records, uh, but I feel like there's still one whole chapter missing, so I do want to get to that right now so we can fill that in and it can be summed up uh, with one name, and that is Dionne Warwick. Would you please welcome <laughs> Miss Dionne Warwick to the stage. When you first met Hal, it was 1959? Yes. How did that come about? Oh, how did that come about? Well, actually, I met Bert first. Uh, I had a group that was doing a multitude of background sessions in New York, and one of the sessions we did was for the Drifters that uh, Bert had written a song with another songwriter, uh, Bob Hilliard, and it was called Mexican Divorce. And uh, we did the background for it, and Bert approached me after the session was over and asked if I'd be interested in doing demonstration records for of songs that he would be writing with a new songwriting partner named Hal David. And he said, yeah, well, you know, as long as it doesn't interfere with my education, because my mother would kill you. <laughs> uh, true. <laughs> and uh, as it turned out, that was my first encounter with Al David. Oh. Well, what it led to is pretty incredible. Uh, some artists get a little embarrassed when they hear all their stats, but I don't care because this is, this is just awesome. Uh, between 1962 and 1998, you charted 56 singles written by Hal and Bert. <laughs> that includes 22 songs that were in the top 40, 12 that were in the top 20, nine top 10 on Billboard's Hot 100. I actually don't think there's ever been a team that has ever topped that record. Can you possibly articulate, Dion, how that level of success felt? You know, being on the road, first of all, you don't get an opportunity to even think about it. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't think we really had time to think about it. <laughs> you know, uh, when I came off the road performing and doing you know, concerts and things of that nature, and they were ready to go into the studio again, uh, would either meet at Bert's apartment with Hal and, and myself and Bert, and, or at the, God bless you, uh, <laughs> seriously, um, at the Brill Building, in that little tiny office. My God. Yeah. I was listening to the description of the office, and it was so true. Yeah. I mean, we walked in this way <laughs> <laughs> and stood against the wall. <laughs> But it, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. Yeah, a lot, a lot of really amazing energy surrounded that building. Oh, and, yeah. and you feel it to this day when you walk in there, even if you know, the same thing's not going on. Mm -hmm. uh, so first of all, now that you have some time to step back, even though you are so, so very busy, appreciate all of that success. Because, uh, you know, or, or what it has done for the people uh, whose lives have been filled with joy because of uh, you putting your voice to those those songs. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's it's important wonderful. to do. Um, I, and I, I'm going to speak to Hal David. I absolutely adored him. Yeah. Hal was the stabilizing situation between Backrack and, and Warwick. And who was, <laughs> and Hal was in. <laughs> and that's, all, that's how it kept us calm. Yeah. And you know, every, Interview that I did, everybody of course was, oh, bird, 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 and say, hey, darling, there's a man named Hal David, and if you didn't have him doing what he did, we'd all be humming. <laughs> 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 and that's the truth. <laughs> so, <laughs> I am thrilled to be here this evening to be a part of celebrating. Oh, what's that? Look at that. <laughs> Celebrating. So let me ask you this, because obviously we, we know all the hits, and there was hit after hit after hit. It, it, it's hard for me to imagine that there were any flops in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there were. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there, there was a little song called, in fact, it was the, the B-side of what actually became the hit record. There's a song called, I Smiled Yesterday. 
And then that, that was followed by a, a little song called This Empty Place. <laughs> <laughs> Massive hits. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, no, we, we, um, we didn't jump out the box having hit records. It took a minute or two for people to understand, first of all, what we were doing. It was different. It, it was, was very was different. completely different. I mean, uh, you know, Bert, being the musician that he is, a brilliant musician, I might add that too as well. He marched to his own drummer. Hal David, fortunately, had a way of writing words that we all, first of all, wish we had thought of first, <laughs> but had the inkling to be able to say. We didn't have to say anything, just put the record on, and you listen to what this man wrote for me to sing, and now that's my story to you. And I was fortunate enough to be the one that had the ability to bring it to your listening ear. So we, um, we were known as the triangle marriage that worked. Yeah. That was that, that's what the industry called us. Yeah. But we did have some bombs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, they were far overshadowed by the hits. And you know, a lot of those hits, uh, songs about love, Hal was uh, obviously best known for that. But he did other things. Well, we know he wrote that song about Salami and the Army. Uh, <laughs> but back in 1967, he actually did a protest song that you recorded called Windows of the World. The Windows of the World, yes. Which happens to be actually my favorite lyric of his. Oh, okay. It's, um, it tells the true story. You know, the windows of the world are covered with rain. Where's the sunshine we all knew? Everybody knows. When little children play, they need a sunny day to grow straight and tall that the sun shine through. He had a magnificent way with words. And um, although it really kind of had to stick the knife in and turn it, it was done with such class and style. You didn't just jab it, you just kind of eased it in. <laughs> <laughs> And a little bit this way, but he got his point across. Yeah, and that was the idea. 